So we're going to talk about the different people involved in this at my school. Oops. This is Clarice, the teacher. She needs to provide interventions in the classroom. That's her role. Um, things that technology can help her with. Um, she could add visual multimedia, how I'm presenting here with the digital projector. Um, we have uh, document cameras that we now have in all of our classrooms. That's a really good way to go over and share realia, student work, things like that, so that they can see it visually. Um, you can do skill-specific re remediation over on the computer, uh, and I'll talk about some of the programs that are available for that. <coughs> Um, she could create forms for tracking the kids' behavior. Some teachers, how many teachers, how many of you have run across a teacher who's just great at doing forms like that? You know, it's like, if, they, if you could have them do forms all day long, that would be just fine. Yeah, well, somebody who's good at that, you know, that's something that they can use technology for. Um, they can also use email for documenting incidents and making, um, the people on the student study team and the administrators aware of things that are going, uh, that are not working as they are occurring. The things that technology will not help with, because technology is not a panacea, and this is based on my experience. It may not end up being yours, but um, I think it's worthwhile being real at these things about what, what it can't do. She's got five students who need an ABC chart done on them. And I've had <laughs> teachers who've had that. ABC charting, FIST 5, anybody know what that is? If I say, that student needs an ABC chart done on them. Okay, I've got a 5 over there to hold. A lot of people not putting up and some people who are at FIST. What's an ABC chart, sir? Antecedents, behavior consequences. So, you've got a kid who's blowing out on a pretty regular basis. You chart all day long. When they have a blowout, what led up to it? the behavior, and what's following it. And imagine doing that for five children in a first grade classroom. Is that going to be possible? I submit to you, no, it's not. And no amount of technology, you can give them a Palm Pilot, you can have them, you know, completely, you know, wired up doing that. It's very difficult to do for five kids. And what I did over in that case is I went up to the program specialist and said, you know, we're going to have to rotate the kid she does, do it two weeks. Maybe we need to go over and just look at a shorter period of time, and she's doing one of them at a time, because otherwise she's going to be out on a stress comp leave. Um, she has 10 students with RTI interventions in a class of 28. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of kids to go over and be intervening with. She needs some outside help, or he needs some outside <laughs> help in that situation. Technology alone will not solve all of the problems that are going on there. Does that sound realistic to everybody? Yes, no. Is Alice just being a whiner? I got the teachers here. Come on, teachers. Am I whining for you or am I telling it like it is? Telling it like it is, yes. Because you don't like it when we sit there in those SST meetings and say, you're going to do this intervention, that intervention, and the next intervention, and it's impossible, right? Because then it's not that the intervention's not working, it's that the system's not working. Oh, let's go next to Peter the principal. <laughs> Actually, my principal is kind of like that. I can see him riding his scooter around. And he looks a lot like that, too, only shorter. Um, he needs to document interventions, like conferences with students that are formal, like suspensions, and informal. Formal things, how many people, uh, just about everybody should be on a really good student information system, like uh, we use Angle, but most people are on PowerSchool or another tracking system for your attendance? Yes. Okay. Um, most of those have something said that you can go over and put in information about suspensions and behavioral interventions that don't, re don't result in a formal um, suspension. You should be using those. It's a lot easier. Informal, it's a little different. Um, handwritten notes, but there are some things that you could do with technology. Um, a lot of administrators um, have Blackberries or other smartphones or semi-smartphones. You can use those to take notes. They have voice recorders on them. You could do audio notes. Okay, so if you're running around from one fire to the next, I just met with um, Jose Rodriguez, 
Um, he was having a very hard time this morning. Turns out he didn't have any breakfast this morning. His dad's been picked up by his parole officer. He's a little upset. We talked briefly. I got him to refocus over on his class. He's back in the class, hopefully working. I'm going to check back on him by the end of the day. Boom. You've just documented an intervention that you've done. Oh, let's see, anything else. Where technology can't help will not make your interventions effective if you are not having an effective relationship with those students, if you don't have an effective discipline plan, if you don't have an effective community in your school, the technology is not going to change any of that. Okay, you got to have the relationships going first. And if you're dealing with, um, if you just had your AP cut and you've got a school that's high needs and you're trying to take care of all of it on your own, it's not going to take care of that situation either. It'll make it a little easier. You won't have to deal with as much where did I leave the paper around. But if you really, if your caseload is truly horrendous, um, it can take care of, you know, that much of it, but it's not going to take care of the whole thing. And I know we've got a lot of schools where we're facing those kind of cuts, right? <laughs> so enough of the principal. Now let's go over and look at the RSP teacher. And like I said, in some schools, um, that's part of it. The kids start getting services before they are qualified, which is new and different. Um, people either complain about the teachers having too much to do with RTI or the RSP teachers have too much. At our school, I think there have been times when the RSP teacher has been overburdened by it because she's over her caseload, right? And she has a lot to fit in. And so those are the two things you really need to be aware of as somebody who's been at a school doing this three years. Um, things kind of smoothed out with the teachers, but at our school, it's still an issue with the RSP teacher. So she can also add visuals and multimedia to instruction. She can also advise the teacher on how to do that most effectively because she's a professional who's been trained on that, right? It's her job. Um, she can create forms for tracking. She can use email for the documenting just like the teacher. Um, what it's not going to fix is that she's maxed down on her caseload really, really badly because she's not going to be as effective having groups of 10, right? She needs to have her groups down at that nice, with that golden level of about six or four, right? And so if she's got too much going on, she's either stressed out and working every minute of the day, or she's got too many kids in her group and then that's not effective for the kids, right? 